Hello, Mr. Mazur. It is February the 5th, about 12.30 p.m. I love watching your video. Always so interesting to hear you talk about things. Ah, uh, yes, sports, sports, sports. I did not watch the Super Bowl, and I also did not watch the Super Bowl last year. I honestly didn't know who was playing in the Super Bowl this year until after the game had already happened. But I hear that the Patriots won. I would say that I really, really care, but it would be a lie. So in response to your comments about people watching you for your method instead of for the character, I have to admit I am guilty of being a person who watches, especially actors that I know, for their method and not for the character. That I am personally super impressed by overreal acting performances like Daniel Day-Lewis in There Will Be Blood and Heath Ledger as the Joker in The Dark Knight, of course many, many, many others. But I also understand the danger of going that far into character and doing things to get into character that are dangerous for you as an actor and obviously also as a person. And I have to admit that I'm also way, way, way more intellectual than I need to be about my acting. Every time that I have an acting professor, they always tell me that I'm too in my head, and that is definitely something that I need to work on. So about your Tinder girl and her cold feet, I wonder if she has experienced the effect of the creepy guy, like the nice guy that you meet on Tinder who turns out to be a creep in real life, and I wonder if she's worried about things like you read about on BuzzFeed, well, not even on BuzzFeed, these are like Time Magazine level stuff, you know, where there's like a creepy guy who's very charming on the internet who cut, turns out to be like really, really scary in person. So you never know, it could be a combination of factors. She could also just be kind of non-committal. She could also not want to take things so quickly. I don't know how long you two were talking together, but if you guys weren't talking together very long and you wanted to hang out in person, maybe that was too quick for her, who knows. That being said, I understand your frustration. So today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite recently named cosmic mechanisms, and it's called Laniakea. For a long time, the scientific community thought that our galaxy rested in a supercluster called the Virgo supercluster, but it turns out that the Virgo supercluster is just an arm of a larger structure called Laniakea. And I specifically want to talk about really awesome words. If you go and read the Wikipedia page for Laniakea, which I absolutely recommend, and there's a link in the description, you will see that the word Laniakea translates to immeasurable heaven. I love huge things like that, stuff that's just like too big to imagine. I love super epic words, so the idea of immeasurable and heaven together, obviously you would already assume that heaven is immeasurable, and so to put those two things together it's just so grand and cosmic that it just makes me excited. Another word that's brought up in the Laniakea Wikipedia page is a term called the Great Attractor. I also love the idea of the Great Attractor, and I have to give you this word-for-word -word definition of what the Great Attractor is from its Wikipedia page. A gravity anomaly in intergalactic space that's so cool. So it's it's a giant localized centralization of mass, and because they can't call it anything more specific than that, it means that it's a mystery, something huge. It's It moves literal clusters of galaxies around space, which is ridiculous, and we don't know what it is. I assume that it's probably something like a really extremely supermassive black hole, but they, they have all kinds of uh, theories that are much more intelligent than mine and much more informed than mine. This is one of the other epic things that it says on the page about it. This mass is observable by its effect on the motion of galaxies and their associated clusters over a region hundreds of millions of light years across. That's wicked. The Great Attractor is a giant localized centralization of mass that moves entire clusters of galaxies around space and we don't know what it is. What? And the last term that I want to mention is called the zone of avoidance, which sounds like something right out of a Star Trek episode. And basically what it actually is, is it's the area of space that's obscured by our galaxy. When galaxies in distant space pass behind it, you can't see them anymore because they're obscured by the light and the gravity and all of those effects on space that we can see by our own galaxy. You should definitely go and read the Laniakea Wikipedia page, and definitely click on the link to every other cool term that it links to in there, and read about all of them, because it just gets more and more cool, and it's a good way to waste an entire evening. Can't wait to hear from you in your next video, and see you next time. What day is it today? It's the 5th of February. That especially people that I know, I shouldn't have never give me a prop. Uh, what did I say? What? Why, hello! Hello, how's it going? Good, I'm making a vlog video. You are? I am. For what? Now you're on it. Oh.
Hello. Hey, what's up? <laughs> that was Adam. <laughs>